people describe as the trenches, the yeah. end. But for me, it was just home. That's all mm. I knew. I did it because I knew it would get me to a better destination, mm. but that wasn't my final destination. Yeah. I've done 100 hour weeks, really? 110. Yeah. One of the biggest challenges is operating on little sleep, mm. especially when you're working on a multi-million, sometimes billion dollar deal. You don't go home at five when mm. it's done. You go home when you've completed what you have to do. So if you have a deliverable and it's due tonight, whatever that tonight means, means it has to get done. Do you have any worries about your business? And how do you, what, what are they and how do you manage them? Okay. Welcome to the Takeoff Experience where I sit down with highly driven people to talk about their journey, their failures and their successes. If you want to take off in your career, your business, your finances, or your mindset, then this podcast is for you. This episode is sponsored by Money Hub, a secure money management app that helps you to manage your money with ease. The Money Hub app provides you with a single view of all your accounts by letting you connect your bank accounts, your savings accounts, investment accounts, your credit cards, all in one place. To help with your money goals, Money Hub has features that allows you to track your incomings versus your outgoings every single month and also allows you to set and track your spending budgets every single month too. It's a fantastic app, right? Well, you can download the Money Hub app for free by tapping the link in my description. You can use the Money Hub app free for six months with no auto renewal. And if you really like the app, then you can continue using it for only £1.49p per month. It's a deal of the century, right? Well, make sure to go and download the app right now. Enjoy the rest of the episode. Welcome back to the Take Off Experience. We've got a special guest in the building. Sol, how are you doing today? I'm good, brother. Good. Thank you very much for having me. You're welcome, man. I've been looking forward to this conversation. Um, but yeah, if we start off, who is Sol? Cool. So my name is Solomon also known as the bodybuilding banker. That's like the term I, term I like to coin. And essentially, I um, my background is in investment banking. But I'm also a wellness entrepreneur and speaker. And I'm someone who really loves business, uh, but is also passionate about health and wellness. And I'm my business essentially marrying the two and bringing it into the workplace. Aside from that, I love all things personal development, big on my faith, and I'm just trying to be a better me and bring as many people up with me amazing you come to the right place because that's that's what we we love talking about those topics too for sure um but we also also like to talk about the person behind of course yeah the business is always always interesting to see yeah. how people got to where they got to for sure um so yeah let's talk about your story where where are your parents from so my parents are from nigeria mom from lagos I okay. think dad from i was gonna say Badun, but i think some remote village like mm. I remember him telling me a story and it's like at 6 a.m. I used to carry water on my head. <laughs> they always say that. Yeah, yeah. So I know he's from a more remote village. My mom grew up in more of the urban area. Mm. Uh, but I know mom's from Lagos. So it might be a bad one. Yeah. And um, do you... Well, I don't know why I always say this. Do you people know where they were born? Yeah, most people do. Were yeah. you? Do you know if you were born there or... No, no. Oh, so you're asking me now I was British. British oh, yeah, born, you were born, 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 born Yeah, born, yeah, yeah. I've been in Nigeria okay. a few times, but my parents are from there. They migrated yeah. here, but they had me here. Yeah. yeah guys, what, what, when was the last time you went back to back home? This is going to be a say? difficult one, man. I'm talking <laughs> too far. This is before 2010. Is it? Yeah, it's been long. You know, I can't talk much, man. I only went, I went recently, but before then it was like, it was a, it was a, it was a while ago. Um, yeah. So yeah, so, so you said that you were born in the UK. Whereabouts uh, where, where, where were you born? So I believe... Guys Hospital grew up, we moved around, so initially mm. Robert Wright, mm. and then we kind of stayed in Ellsbury, so it was Bermondsey, okay. so I grew up yeah. in Ellsbury, I stayed, stayed there for a number of years, and then moved over to like more of Greater London, or mm. should I say Kent, Yeah, uh, but lived in Ellsbury for a long time. Okay, yeah. and what was it like, how, how did you find growing up in the area for yourself? Yeah, I think hindsight is a beautiful thing, because mm. you don't realise what you're going through when you're in it but yeah. when you look from hindsight your perspective is very different mm. so you know people describe it as the trenches yeah. the end but for me it was just home that's all mm. i knew so for me it was fine i think um what was really helpful was having positive parents faith-based yeah. parents who you know particularly my dad who pushed me to you know believe and become whoever mm. i want to be and as a result uh, whilst I lived in the surroundings, I didn't identify myself as the surroundings. Yeah. And so 
you know, I whatever I set my mind to or my heart to, I just pursued it. Yeah. So yeah. going back to your initial question, it was fine. Like, I think I was a lot more free back then. Okay. You know, you would, of course, keep safe, but yeah. free in a sense of you go out and play. You want to play with your friends. Yeah. You know, you had to be back at a certain time. Okay. Um, I remember free school meals. I'm mm. a biggie. I'm a massive <laughs> okay. foodie. So yeah. I remember eating. But again, I, I look at it from a different lens now, mm. having come out of the area yeah. and thankfully got to a better destination. What w would be perceived better. Yeah. But um, at the time, I just saw it as home. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting that you were saying about parenting because I feel like you're you're absolutely right. I think it's really important, mm. um, especially if you're you're living in a place where there's lots of distractions. For sure. For sure. Around, do you know yeah. what I mean? Um, I'm not parenting yet, so I, mm. you know I can only imagine how tough it must be to like yeah. you know guide your 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 children. But like you said, like your parents instilled that belief that you can be anything that you want, and it kind of showed you the right path. And I feel for like sure. when you're growing up, you kind of need that, right? You need mm. to know, okay this is what's possible kind mm. of thing right and also you can do it you can mm. you can become whatever you uh, you you want to become as well um school wise were you uh what do they call people in school boffin that's what they used to call people <laughs> yeah, do you remember yeah, that yeah, word yeah, yeah. i don't think they use it boffin, anymore yeah but, the um, terms have but changed. yeah but even some people i remember were smart but not boffins yeah to be honest it doesn't even matter yeah but um were you d did you enjoy school did you enjoy studying and stuff like that yeah no i enjoyed studying my yeah. mom was actually funny story she was a teacher at a time okay and okay. once i don't know how i don't know how this happened but she was actually my supply teacher so you can imagine how good i was in class okay <laughs> yeah i remember her being uh my teacher i didn't say a word yeah. i was in front so from the early years my, my parents both um, encourage education okay. as a way out mm -hmm. and that's what I felt for a very long time okay. I still think it's very important yeah. to get a level of education but I feel like the world's evolved and it's not the only way to be successful yeah. but going back to your school question I just tried to be a good student okay. uh, when it came to test time I would mm. perform so I wasn't mo the most attentive mm. or the best in class but mm. when it came to yeah. doing exams or presentations or whatever had to be done yeah. I made sure that I did enough to perform well mm. why yeah. do you think why do you think you did that Cause I was like that too. Yeah, but I'm, yeah. I'm curious That's to know why. That's a good you think, one. I've yeah. never been asked. Yeah. Do you know what? Now I'm realizing my identity w is not found in my education. Mm. However, the way my parents fought because of their upbringing, yeah, education, and it worked a few years ago. Yeah. was where you can have a better life than them. Okay, and yeah. so because that was their way of thinking mm -hmm. they tried to i don't want to use enforce encourage me yeah so rather than maybe exploring some of the talents oh yeah. you're a very good speaker or you're a very yeah. good actor their mindset is get a very good job mm -hmm. doctor lawyer i think there was th those were the only two mm -hmm. perform well mm -hmm. get a very good salary yeah and so because you spend a large part of your life with your parents indirectly their beliefs mm. can become your beliefs. Yeah. So that's probably why I took education serious and I knew the importance, mm. but ultimately I saw that this wasn't, this wasn't something that fulfilled me yeah. internally. So I did it because I knew it would get me to a better destination, mm. but that wasn't my final destination. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I would apply myself as much as I can to my books but I wouldn't wholeheartedly submit to it because mm. I had other interests. I think okay. at the time it was playing football as everyone mm. does. But I also had a stint where yeah. I was playing drums. So I used to do a lot of drums for my church and then I played at FOL. Uh, I, at the time I could actually sing funny enough. Okay. Not many people knew, but that voice is gone. So I'm not even <laughs> going to try it. But yeah, my interest was mm. in a few other things. Okay. It's it's so interesting that you, you say that because I feel like for many of our parents, they're just thinking about safety, right? That's so it. Yeah. job and a job is, as a doctor, a lawyer for them is safety. Safe, there, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. You know, engineer as well. Safety. I remember mm -hmm. um, my mom saying to me, she wanted me to be a doctor. And the thing that I always remember her saying was that I want you to be a doctor because doctors always will have jobs. Mm -hmm. They'll always everybody needs a doctor yeah, that, yeah. so that was her thinking just safety sure. so when you were saying that, i was thinking yeah, yeah. It's, that's what they were thinking safety not mm. things 
taking the risk with like a business, which is why mm. they probably never encourage exactly. us to, to be exactly. like, you know, business or any explore anything else, like, mm. you know, singing or mm. going to football, because to them, that's like, that's a huge risk. Mm. Like, what's the chances that you're going to make sure. it? So, yeah, I never really pondered that for or mm. really sat down and thought, actually, that's the... You that's know, the real reason yeah yeah, yeah. it's very, very 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 interesting um okay so and um went to college then you went to university as yeah. well right what was um what did you decide to study at university so i ended up studying engineering so okay. it was a midpoint between okay. what my parents wanted yeah. from a very mathematical or science-based background but at the same time i worked backwards okay. i knew that engineering would give me options because it, it focused on three things. You're very analytical. Mm -hmm. You are good at working in teams mm -hmm. and also you're project orientated. Okay. And those three things are very transferable to yeah. other uh, career paths. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, I went into investment banking yeah. and they're very important in that field. So okay. that was one of the reasons, well, that was the sole reason why I did engineering. Okay. Oh, yeah. wow. That's good. That's really ahead, three, four steps. Yeah, ahead. but the degree itself was a battle. Yeah. Because okay? it wasn't my natural interest. Yes, yeah. I was good at maths. Yes, I was fairly good at science. I got good grades. But I think at university, to some degree, depends on the course, but something like that, where it's a traditional, mm. uh, you, you then see people who the interest shows itself. Yeah. And so you have to become very good at passing exams mm -hmm. because you're not very interested in the subject. Yeah, and the yeah. thing with engineering, yes, you had a lot of mathematical and science-based exams, but mm -hmm. you also had group projects. Yeah. You also had to do individual projects. And that's where your engineering creativity mm. was required. Okay. But because I wasn't interested in it, interested in it mm. I had to find other ways around that. Okay, yeah. wow. That's 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 crazy. Mm. Wow. And um, so when you uh, finish uh, university, what did you decide to do like career-wise? Investment banking. Okay, Invest so you knew that you Yeah, were yeah. So banking. I worked backwards. Okay. I, okay. I So with investment banking, it's one of those careers which, again, I just Googled what makes a lot of money, found out Is investment banking. Yeah, no, oh, initially, man. before university. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I remember like me and my friends, man. funny story. We um, don't even know how. So we we found out about this career called actuarial science. Yeah. It's the people that I think create the formulas. Don't get me wrong, but mm. to do with like insurance and mm -hmm. stuff like that. It, yeah. It's a lot more complicated than that. But I know they were highly paid. Yeah. And London School of Economics is one mm -hmm. of the best universities to go. And we ended up going an open day. And from that open day, they said, you need to go to these Target 6 unis. Mm -hmm. Target 6 being, I believe, Oxford, Cambridge, LSE, yeah. UCL, or Warwick. Not to say there's those unis are the only ones. There's, there's a lot of good unis and yeah. a lot of people have been very successful outside of those. But that's how my decision was based. So okay. I was like, okay, I need to get into these unis and I need to do a degree that opens me up to these possibilities. Mm -hmm. That's how I formed my okay. decision. Okay. And it's so funny because now I'm an entrepreneur. That's a method that I'm learning to yeah. use that I realized was successful for me before. Yeah. But I don't necessarily, it's not as intuitive yeah. because I guess it's new. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. But yeah, going back to your question, uh, I went into investment banking. So I did a couple of internships mm. at some of the, like, the big investment banks. Mm. And then finally landed a role as an analyst and, okay. and so on. Okay, cool. And what, what, what does an analyst do? If, can you break that down for us? Yeah. What, what yeah, an analyst yeah. does, yeah. Yeah, so the easiest way to describe is what m a because I think people, yeah. m a stands for mergers and acquisitions. Yeah. And this is where a company uh, acquires another business. Mm. So do you either want to buy the business or the business wants to be sold? And as an investment banking analyst, you work on a number of things. What you do, the main part of your job is valuation. Mm -hmm. So if I was going to buy McDonald's today, uh, I need to pay a price today that represents the future value of McDonald's discounted to today. Mm -hmm. So there's a number of ways you can do this. You can look at similar restaurants, which is like comparable companies. So KFC, what are they valued? And use a multiple to determine the value of McDonald's. Mm -hmm. So what that simply looks for me is, looking at their research, looking at their financials, okay. building financial models, which is Excel models, which yeah. look at their numbers, 
predict how they have mm. they been in the past, look at some data of how mm. they're going to be in the future and then bring that back to a price today that you can represent the value of yeah. McDonald's. So that's one of the things okay. we do. Wow. We don't just do financial models. We also do presentations. Okay. So Who are you presenting to when you're doing that? So the board yeah. of like the management that you're going to oh, really? acquire okay. or sell, or it could be a number of things. So okay. if you're working on an acquisition yeah. and so if you're working on a deal, we're skipping mm. a bit, but on a deal, you do something called a tease and a management presentation okay. teases the idea that mm. you tease the company mm -hmm. by showing highlights of your company because you want to sell them you want to make your company mm. good management presentation again mm. as it, the name suggests yeah. is building out a presentation that shows the full picture of your company business yeah. overview operations mm -hmm. customers distribution channels yeah. finance um, but yeah, as an investment bank, you're normally the engine room. Okay. So you deliver these presentations as in use PowerPoint to make mm. them look really good and okay. put information out there. You do the Excel. And then the other thing is you do a lot of, um, how would I describe it? Just managing a lot of other different things. So you could be on mm. calls to lawyers and accountants. Uh, you could be speaking to consultants to get information. And mm -hmm. when you're on a deal process, you do something called managing a data room. Okay. So when you imagine a high level deal now and we've agreed you this success, this podcast is super successful. Mm. You want to buy it and they want to make sure that when they buy it, they're buying what you're telling them they're mm. buying. So now you have to show them all the confidential mm -hmm. documents and we as an investment bank or as an analyst you usually manage the data room so you separate okay. the parties uh so there's the buyer and there's the seller and you okay. manage the different documents okay in the data room wow that's crazy so it, it sounds like i don't even want to say this about investment bankers don't yeah. take this offensively yeah it's like from what I understand, so with that merger and acquisition, you're almost advising them on of it. Of course. And of then course. you charge them to yes. advise them yes. and help them yep. on that, right? Mm -hmm. Because obviously they're not, I don't want to say they're not skilled enough, but they don't have those skills yeah, yeah. to be able to do that. That's, that sounds very interesting. Yeah. It sounds very intense as well. Oh, it's right? intense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very early on. I've done 100 hour weeks. Really? 110. Yeah. It's not always like that. People yeah. do exaggerate. I've done yeah. that. That yeah. wasn't the average, but the average yeah. was, um, you know, usually you, you start a little bit later, nine, nine thirty, but you can go anything to twelve, one. Okay. And that was normal. Yeah. And so post COVID pandemic, having flexible working has really made a yeah, change. It's changed and, a lot. Yeah. And I think there's been a few instances in investment banking where um, you know, some people's health have been at risk. So like they're more relaxed on Fridays and mm. they try and protect your weekends because okay. it's a v there's a lot of attrition. That just yeah. means a lot of people leave. Yeah. After two years, okay. People can't sustain it or they move on yeah so they found ways in order to keep talent mm. um by making the hours a lot more manageable but usually yeah. in your junior years that's where you learn the most okay. and then as a senior yeah as you go up your hours should in theory depending yeah. on the nature of the bank mm. reduce okay mad um actually I, I forgot to ask you this question mm -hmm. um so so are you i remember you saying that you did internship mm -hmm. at a few of the uh, yeah. big banks is that what helped you get your first role as yeah. uh, as an as an analyst right sure. okay so so if without that would you have been able to get it do you think so i'll, I'll go ahead and explain so yeah. investment banking is actually quite structured okay and it's one of those careers that you decide very early on because if you do a three year three year course at university there's something called a spring week mm -hmm. so one week insight into the investment bank if you perform well, you can convert that into a summer internship. So you okay. go back the following summer, do mm -hmm. 10 weeks paid in which you work. And it's, it's almost an opportunity to make an informed process, um, the informed decision. So you see if they like you and they see if you can handle it. And then off the back of that, you do a full time. So I did some spring weeks. Yeah. I got the summer, but I didn't get the full time offer. I was, you know, say it was Goldman Sachs. Mm -hmm. So I was like 19 and... There was a lot of European, because you compete with not just UK students, you compete mm. with um, European students. Mm. And these guys are a lot more prepared. They do internships. They stack up internships. They have like Is three it? years. But yes, yeah, taking nothing away, I just wasn't ready at the mm. time. Okay. But um, through having that sort of experience, I was mm. able to land a full-time role. Okay. Wow. That's that's amazing. Uh, uh, it's, it's good to hear insights into it. And um, oh, man, yeah, that's crazy. Um what what are some of the challenges that you've had as an investment banker yourself? Sure. I think the biggest one, you know, outside of the technical nuance of the job 
is I've had to hide my full personality. And I don't think this is just limited to investment banking. Mm. I think uh, in general corporate, people separate their home life to their corporate life. So they live two lives simultaneously, Mm. which can be overbearing. Mm -hmm. Again, like you are in a corporate setting and I understand that you have to bring a professional side to you. But sometimes being the minority means that, and I don't know if you've experienced it, Mm. is where, when we met, we Mm. started talking, but very quickly the barriers were down and we talked about Mm. things and it was quite comfortable. But if you were in a different setting Mm. with a different set of people, that comfort zone wouldn't Mm. have been uh, passed, if that makes sense. So I think the biggest challenge for me, because one of my passions is health and wellness, Mm. was actually going to the gym and bringing that side to me. So I remember very early on, I was wearing bigger suits because I didn't want, I was so willing to be known for my work that I didn't want people to focus on anything outside of that. So the bigger suit will masquerade the physique because I was a lot bigger than I am now. And then very quickly I knew this job, you worked a lot of hours. Mm -hmm. So in order to keep healthy, you need to control Mm -hmm. your nutrition. Mm -hmm. And so I started bringing in meals, but because a lot of people used to I wouldn't say inquisitive is the word, but they'd want to find out a lot about my personal Mm. life while I was bringing in the meals. I then had to hide my meals sometimes. So I'd go to the canteen, I'd go to the back of the canteen and have my meals in secret Mm. because I didn't want attention focusing away from my work. Because you're already different. You don't want to highlight yourself, if that makes sense. Yeah, wow. That's crazy. No, I I have had some of those challenges as well, Mm. I would say as well. What do they call it now? They've got a word for it, code switching. What they say, wow. oh, yeah. that. that's that. That's, that's what crazy. the word is. That's what yeah, the word is. Yeah. The word is 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 code switching. Like yeah. you, you are different at work. You speak differently at work. Everyone does it. All that Everyone kind of stuff. It. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. It, it happens in the corporate world. I think mm. that's just how how um how it can be sometimes. And yeah. and I agree with you. I think it is it is a is a challenge because it can put a bit of a strain on you. Do you know 100%. what I mean? Like um, I remember when I was working um at a corporate company. I remember I also used to wear suits as well. Yeah. I think by the end of my time there, I hadn't worn a suit again. Yeah. Didn't even wear a shirt, nothing. I was like, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to dress how I want to dress. I want to dress comfortable. Agreed. <laughs> you want to be comfortable. Yeah. Exactly right. For sure. Um, and they say bring your whole self to work. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, I mean cool. <laughs> we, we, we're going to do that. We're going to do that. Yeah. Um. So if you were talking to a graduate wanting to get into investment banking, what would be your advice to them? That's a good question. I would say that you should try and talk to as many people as possible because there's a key distinction between wanting to get into the, to get into investment banking and the idea of working investment banking. The idea sounds good, Mm. but does it suit your skill set? One of the biggest challenges is operating on little sleep, Mm. especially when you're working on a multi-million, sometimes billion dollar deal. Sleep can be lost because I think the difference I've noticed, and it's not just investment banking, Mm. but it's very relevant to investment banking is you don't go home at five when Mm. it's done. You go home when you've completed what you have to do. So if you have a deliverable and it's due tonight, Whatever that tonight means, means it has to get done. Mm. And so that's one of the things that I struggled with. And you also have reduced weekends. You don't get to communicate as much with friends and family in the early years. It might even Mm. extend depending on how busy the idea is. So going back to your question, I'd say speak. The first thing is speak to people. Try to get as much experience as possible. And I know some people say, how do you get experience with no experience? But there's so many ways now. You've got mm. LinkedIn. You, if you reach out to 50 people a day for a month, mm. someone's going to give you an opportunity, even if it's for free, because that experience can not just help you get a better firm, which most yeah. people use, but also help you to find out 
whether the role is for you and if the role is for you, what division works well for you. Yeah. Because whilst I mentioned m a there's also capital markets, there's mm. also sales and trading, which you still work in an investment bank, but they require different skills. They're a different job function. Okay. So you might be better suited to these sorts of um, roles. Okay, okay, cool. That sounds so uh, good. I was going to ask you, actually, how did you manage that? Like all the, you know, the long hours, the long days, the reduced weekends. How how, how did you manage and overcome that? I didn't, to oh, be honest. Didn't. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I would yeah. like to say I would, but I'll be yeah. honest, I, I struggled. Yeah. Uh, but I would say what helped me manage it mm -hmm. is very early on in my life, I was never s just chasing one goal okay so if we go back to school i'll be playing football after school mm -hmm. i'll be going to church back then three or four times a week mm -hmm. and i would be playing instruments okay. i'll be going to choir practice and i'll be doing something else so very early on i think i became i wouldn't say the best time manager but i very quickly had a full calendar Okay. So when we got to university, I was doing a degree which was challenging to myself, but I was also playing for the football team. I was also part of, part of different societies. And then I was applying to banks and people would know applying to banks is almost a full-time job in mm. itself, even if you go to a target university. Yeah. So I think for me, it was almost normal. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Like having gone into investment banking, yeah, I felt it. Mm. But I guess my previous activities in life had prepared me for it. So, okay. yeah. Interesting. Uh, is I'm glad that you were honest to say that it was, yeah, it was tough and it was yeah. something that was hard to manage. I think a lot of people were trying to shy away from that. And mm. you know what's funny? Like you said, attrition. I think a lot of people go into investment banking and make a bit of money and they're like, yeah, I'm out of this they're place. I'm gone. out of this place. Yeah, I'm not, yeah, yeah. not going to... Um, uh, do this anymore um you also classify yourself as a bodybuilder right yeah, yeah. Uh, that was very that was interesting talk me talk me through that yeah, yeah yeah so i call myself the bodybuilding banker a bit of alliteration there but i've been going to gym for about seven eight years now i've always enjoyed it uh i was a sports person and for me i feel like it's important for the mind uh, and body to be as aligned as possible although as a believer i know like the body's just a temple of God, but mm. still it's very important to look after your body because, you know, if you feel good, you're likely to perform 100%, whether it's in relationships, business, or every aspect of life. So initially, I... um So initially, I was going to gym a couple of times a week, and I think when I got to Warwick, it was a big game changer because I realized there's a lot of science mm. in the gym. So I was fortunate enough to have you know, the rugby team and mm. different people who took a lot of time in the gym. And I saw the manipulation of your physique because everyone lifted, but people mm. look different. People could look what you'd say hench, mm. but some people had very good proportions to them. Okay. And I think the key between a bodybuilder and a weightlifter is a weightlifter is just focused on just pushing the weight mm. and, and glorifying heavy numbers a bodybuilder is almost like an artist okay. building their desired physique mm. based on their knowledge and their ability to manipulate okay. that body and that idea of manipulation okay. really fascinated me and then i started learning about the nutrition side okay. and bringing that together that really fascinated me and mm. i think with jim there i won't say there's a limit but very mm. quickly if you commit a lot of time to it you can pretty much know what to do chest yeah. day or I, I do push pull legs so you know you have bench press you have arnold press you have deadlift squat mm. so the exercises there's no new exercises mm. but with bodybuilding um the idea of learning constantly being a student and again you someone could be taller than you mm. but you can look better than them because you know how to use what you've got a lot yeah. better really fascinated me okay. and then there's an individualistic element to it that helps my competitive side okay. and i felt like it really helped my mind as well oh really okay. so yeah wow that's amazing yeah. i've got a question for you right so yeah i think with the gym the major thing that people struggle with obviously is consistency yeah everybody probably now it's march now so i bet you <laughs> a bunch of people have dropped off, dropped off yeah. but a lot of people would have 
you know, said, okay, my New Year's resolution is to to lose weight, is to I don't know, get a six pack or whatever, right? How do you how do you stay consistent? Yeah, I think the first thing for me is I enjoy it. Mm. So, it, and and I'll answer this in twofold. I enjoy it, and you always make time for what yeah. you enjoy, right? People say they don't have time. Well, if you accounting for every single hour and Dan Pena said this to me if you accounted for every mm. single hour you'll realize how much time you waste and you'll mm. find out what you care about mm. so take out myself because everyone comes to me and say but you enjoy it if your why is big enough you're going to find a way mm. what I mean by that is if you attach enough importance to go to the gym you know, you're going to find a way. And then one of the things that I've learned to do in all aspects of my life is simplify your life. Mm -hmm. You want to go to the gym, look at the barriers or the steps in between gym. So it might be, you don't know what to do. Yeah. Get a personal trainer. Yeah. Okay. If it's too expensive, then look on YouTube, but you can even get a lot more basic than that. And this helped me a lot in my analyst years. Okay. So, First of all, I used to set my bag the night before. Mm. Okay. This meant That's that good. if I'm going to the gym now, that there's less resistance mm -hmm. to go because my bag is already set. Yeah. Then I would cook my meals the night before or the morning. Again, so I have the right nutrition mm. when I go to gym because mm. you're most vulnerable or hungry after gym and you could you have the tendency to eat out, mm. which to some respect can ruin your gain. So mm. having the meals prepared okay. would help me make sure I stay the course. So from a pra more practical element, I would say that if you want to go three times a week, well, first join a gym, mm. you've ticked that box, then make it easier. Say to yourself, you know, there's something called Parkinson's law, which that means that work expands according mm. to the time it takes. So some people say gym is long. Well, if you say I'm only going to spend 45 minutes, mm. it's you can you can get a workout done in 45 minutes. Mm. You know what I mean? If you say you want to go to gym three times, allocate three times in a week between seven and eight, I'm mm. going to go gym and you're going to find a way. And then going back to my initial point, if your why is big enough and you attach enough importance, you're going to yeah. find a way to go. Yeah, because um, I think you're absolutely right. It's like, like you said, is it is it is it strong enough? What, what, yeah. what is it? Do you, do you really want that six pack, yeah. right? Is it is this six pack important enough? Exactly. I feel like you say, like, I think a lot of people when they uh, say, yeah, they wanted to go to gym, not that it's flimsy, but maybe mm. it's just they don't really understand the really reasons. why they want to want to exactly. do that. Um, you touched on something, uh, nutrition. Um, so you cook, you cook your own meals yeah, yeah. as, 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 cooking as well. Longest, so you, yeah. I guess you, there's certain foods that you're, you're, you're avoiding as yeah. well. Avoiding is a strong word. So mm. I'm in comp now, so okay. it's a bit different. So what does that mean? So I'm doing a competitive body. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm cool, doing, cool. uh, what you call men's physique. So those yeah. are like the, I don't want to say models, but the athletes that have the more athletic look. Okay. So there's different classes. There's like open. Those are like yeah. the gigantic mass monsters. Mm. There's classic, which is uh, similar to that. And there's men's physique. It's okay. all about having like a very beach body. So a wide yeah. look at the top and a small waist. Okay. So because I'm in competition, mm. the idea of the competition is to bring an amazing physique. Right. Generally as much muscle as possible, but as low body fat so they can see the lines. They can see your okay. lats. They can see your shoulders. So because I'm on a bodybuilding prep, mm. I'm obviously eating to an extremely strict diet okay so calories How's that for you, are, by the way? initially you know what? i tried it last year uh, this is a funny story i tried it last year and i was about eight weeks out and i wasn't perfect i was sneaking in uh, nando's there yeah. and a bar there and then i went to america eight weeks out and i put on like 5kg in like three weeks <laughs> yeah i ate <laughs> so Mad. yeah to answer your question because i've been through that process yeah. and I use failures feedback mm. it's a lot better okay and I also visualize success so like I vi visualize me winning the competition mm. and so because I have the end goal I work backwards and the, the final thing is I just take it a day at a time okay you know I'm what eight nine weeks out maybe eight weeks out now if I think another eight weeks of doing all of this it's going to be long but if I just take each day at a time mm. you get through it yeah 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 Wow, that's so that's so so interesting. I guess what is the motivation for for wanting to do like a bodybuilder competition? Yeah, sure. Well? Yeah. I just 
got to that period in gym where, remember, I've been going for about eight years. My learning stale. Like okay. I could get big. I could get shredded. Mm. Well, not sh bodybuilding shredding because I've learned there's a new level of shredded, but I can get fairly, you know, six pack mm. uh, fairly easily. So for me, it was that idea of being a student again. That's why I love, I love learning. You know, if it's not my Bible, it's podcasts, it's, you know, speaking, it's learning from people who have been very successful. For So the idea of being a student again in the gym was so good and then the mindset it's okay. a very individualistic sport but the mindset you have to have yeah. is good because you're tired you're hungry so to give you an idea i have to do the stairmaster mm. so i do that 40 minutes a day in the morning on an empty stomach and then i will find an opportunity to train mm. so no matter whether it's raining sunny i still have to do that so mentally, sometimes that could be difficult. Mm. But coming out of that, hmm. the mental fortitude yeah. will help me be a lot more of a stronger person. So that's what I'm attracted to. Okay. It's not just the physique. Mm. Yet it's going to be great. And it's great to do it whilst I'm young as well. But it's that competitive element. But the yeah. mindset it brings you in, that is really attracting me. Wow, that's yeah. sounds fascinating, man. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. Good luck with the competition as well. Thank you, bro. Yeah. You'll see in some pictures posted, hopefully. And I've lost a bit of weight, but in the next couple of weeks we'll really get that. That's where okay. the cheats come. Okay, that's where yeah, the cheats are. Yeah. And then on the day, is it like you know with UFC fighters, I know that um in MMA that on the day when they're doing the scaling, they don't drink no water, no food. Is that a, like a similar so type of I've watched a couple Ooh. of videos. I haven't been in it. So I think what you do it's and again, yeah. bodybuilding is, is a choice. So people might feel sorry for me. I chose yeah. to do it. But I know you do, you dehydrate. I don't know mm. the specifics because I've never done it, but I've watched a couple of videos. I think a few days or weeks, I don't know, but you drink a lot of water, maybe like six to eight liters. Mm. Then you go from that to drinking literally half a glass or even a lid of, some people have told me like a little lid <laughs> bottle lid of water and the idea is to shock the body and release as much water weight because think of it you're on stage and the judges are judging you on your physique on how well you pose but also how dry you are dry is just a term for how lean you are how much how much muscle can i see how much mm. definition that's what the community Oof, use so nice. it's another le it's not the beach body yeah. definition it's another level yeah. of definition and it's not the most healthiest mm. But for me, it's like that challenge of being at the top of the sport, especially doing it as someone who has a business and, and works and, you know, advocate for it, advocating it for it naturally as well. Mm. Uh, it's something I'm really pushing for. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. You, so on that note, uh, you started a health and wellness platform for employees called uh, Total Fit. Talk to us about that. Yeah, sure. So Total Fit is a wellness platform for employees. And the idea is that we, if you're a business owner, you have, let's say, 100 employees. Mm. This is a subscription platform that brings all their premium wellness offerings on one platform. Okay. And so rather than having multiple memberships to, say, a nutrition provider, a gym, a yoga instructor, we bring this all on one curated okay. platform and present it as like a benefit to your workforce. Okay. And the reason why I started it is because, again, working in investment banking, mm. I realized that I, although it was very difficult at times, still found a way to go gym, mm. but I don't represent the rest of the population. Okay. And as we discuss, it seems as though no matter how fit you are, you get mm. into the world of work and sometimes business and it's like, cool, I have to choose either or. It's like, I want to progress in work so my health has to suffer. Mm. suffer. And then you get to a point where you either crash diet or you kind of deal with it and you're not yeah. happy, but you realize that they're two separate things. Yeah. And not to say that the world of work doesn't provide solutions, mm. but there's not a one-stop solution that makes it easier for the employer yeah. and employee to keep their workforce. Because at the moment, one of the biggest challenges they're having is mm. recruitment of good talent mm. and retention of good talent okay. and finally having their talent 
um, being as productive as possible. Yeah. You know, because if we let's throw some arbitrary figures out there, especially in investment banking, mm. you you're gonna recruit someone. Uh, it's gonna be very expensive. So mm. it could be let's throw some numbers out there. It could be twenty thousand you pay to the recruiter, mm. another twenty thousand to train them up mm. and then 20k in lost productivity because mm -hmm. of that period to train them up mm. or do you want to pay 500 to a thousand pound uh a year mm. for the employee to have that service mm. which would avoid that high cost you know what yeah, i mean okay. so it's all about the roi for the mm. business and connecting it with health and then you look at a wider impact mm. like putting less pressure on the NHS. Mm -hmm. I, I read a stat that there's, this NHS waiting list is up to 7 million, which is crazy. Again, not all uh, gym related, but a large part with muscle, muscle skeletal issues. Mm. And so, yeah, there's a huge problem there mm. and uh, hopefully I'm the one to solve it. Yeah that's, yeah, that's dope. That's amazing. And, you know, on that note, you landed a big client as well. Can you talk to us about that? that yeah, that sure. Client? I'm going and, a yeah, bit of detail. And how that happened, yeah. Yeah, I know. I, I know everybody wants this like crazy story, but I'm just, just glory to God. It was literally through LinkedIn. Okay. So, of course, I was doing all the right things. Mm. I was doing outreach. And you know how uh, how mm. you are as a new business. We had yeah. some conversations about like your sponsorship, which yeah. congrats on yeah. that. Thank you. Um, I was doing cold calls. I was doing cold outreach. And, you know, if you don't shoot, you don't score. Mm -hmm. And eventually I, um, through, through failing and getting feedback on why they don't want to engage with my business, a large part was because it was new, but I didn't have certain things. I didn't make mm. the offer very easy for someone to say yes. Mm. I learned a lot. And then finally, when the big client came, I had an offer in place and I was able to fulfill it. So okay. they needed... Uh, a yoga instructor to come in for a wellness, a series of wellness um, sessions for their employees. Mm. And the feedback was fantastic. You know, we came in their workspace and really supported their employees. They felt refreshed. Mm. They felt more productive. Yeah. And they actually came to the office more as a result. So okay. that was great. Oh, that's a good, that's a good uh, Yeah, feedback. yeah, that was that, great. Yeah. No, and um yeah, there's a lot of things out there that is very similar to what we do. So what we're trying to do is really crystallize it now, yeah. expand it to an offering that couldn't, it's not just for Microsoft, but mm. for other companies. Mm. And then again, get it to a more scalable yeah. model. Yeah, on that note, actually, you actually just mentioned the next question I was going to ask is, um, you know, how are you ensuring that you stay ahead of the game just in case? Because obviously what happens a lot right like somebody will see this idea and be like oh it's amazing this guy's you know solves landed a, a deal with microsoft let's you know somebody yeah. might try and copy it so how are yeah, you sure. making sure that you stay ahead of the game i think you need to understand that people copy yeah uh there's mcdonald's and there's mm, kfc true. so you gotta you, you can't be scared scared about that i think where you stay ahead of the game is what makes you different. Mm. Sounds very cliche, but this this is something that I really focus on. Mm. And one thing that I'm trying to do is always engage with your customer. Mm. I think one of the, the lessons I found is like you have to fail fast. Mm. And this is a this sometimes is misunderstood. It's not the idea of failing but finding out what doesn't work mm. and then finding out why it doesn't work mm -hmm. and then applying it to your business. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people, you know, if they're starting a business, they may spend weeks and weeks on making yeah. a website pretty, but find out <laughs> if your product yeah. sells, find out if there's a demand and if there's not a demand, make changes to your product. So in case, in in, in relation to your question, mm. stay ahead of the game by constantly reading. I love taking information mm. always, whether it's a podcast, mm. I read a lot. And I think the biggest line is speaking to people. Okay. Speaking to people who are ahead in the game. Mm. You know, so like some of my key uh, people that I talk to are like people in operations, HR managers who have oversight to this sort of thing. Okay, so that's um, who you that's who you get in touch with. You'd engage basically. with them okay. because they're okay. like you, you in on any sort of business, I think mm -hmm. you engage into the decision makers mm -hmm. and the community yeah. or the customers of your business mm -hmm. and see what's out there, see 
why they like it, what mm. they don't like about it, mm. and then you can implement it into your business. Mm. How have you how have you found that um outreach for yourself? Because it, it must be quite tough, you know, as yeah. a new business, right? <laughs> to 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 do the outreach. How how do you genuinely find it? It's it's a I never say I have a bad day. I always say I have a character building day. Okay. Because it's very interesting. I got an email where I did one of these uh, email, I don't want to call it spam, I did one of these email marketing campaigns. Okay. So you get a load of uh, content, contact information and you mm. send your offer, but you don't necessarily sell, you try and engage customers. Mm. And one guy has responded to me, I've woken up and usually when I wake up, I spend like half an hour reading my Bible, it's like listen to positive stuff. Mm. But I think I looked at my phone because I had like a meeting coming up. And what the first thing I see is this guy, can you unsubscribe me from this? I'm not interested. So that's why I say character building okay, day. Wow. When you say how you find it, you have to become immune to that sort of thing. Yeah. Because the more no's you are, the closer to you are to it. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So yeah, you just try what works and you pivot. And that's the biggest learning. Gosh, so yeah. it, it, sometimes it's sending, I just get into this work mode and maybe mm. it's from my banking days. Well, I'm still in the field, but having that work ethic to just send messages mm. and then try and get feedback from them, try email marketing campaigns and then network as well in mm. person is really um, undervalued. That's really powerful. Okay, wow. Yeah, no, I, I mean, this is the thing. It's like you said, fail fast. I think if you're going to start a business, I think nobody should be under any illusion that you're going to have hiccups with it. Mm. You know, if you think about, even if you think about the most, the biggest businesses in the world, like your Googles, your Amazon. I mean, they didn't just become billion dollar companies just mm. like overnight. They they went through their own For trials sure. and tri tribulations as well. I think with um, Amazon, I'm pretty sure that they didn't even believe that. I think the, the whole, I'm, I'm is it Amazon? I can't remember. There was one of them where mm. I'm, I'm sure, I think with Jeff Bezos, yeah, there was no belief that he could do what he it's crazy what he's yeah, done. I'm, I'm sure that they, they yeah. didn't. There was not a lot of belief. Anyway, I know from the stock price, let me talk from the yeah. from the investing in the company, a lot of people didn't believe yeah. it because if they did, a lot of people would have invested and exactly. stayed invested. So they yeah. didn't. So yeah, so they didn't believe in it um, really. Yeah. And yeah, look what look, look what he's um, kind of achieved. He could have just been like, you know what? Exactly. Look, a crash has happened. I'm, yeah. I'm done. I'm out of here. I'm not going to, you know, continue with it. So I feel like that is definitely um, part of, of it um do you have any worries about your business and how do you what what are they and how do you manage them okay so naturally i'm human so i'm, I'm flawed yes i do have worries but this is where my faith mm. plays in you know um uh, so i um believe in god i'm a christian mm. and my human understanding is limited so having the faith there's a difference. There's like faith in God, but the faith of God. Mm. And the difference with that is that the faith in God is like a hope, but also relies on your understand, understanding of his timing. But mm. the faith of God is when that his will is done, you know that what he has planned for your life is going to manifest mm. because that's that perfect faith. So mm. going back to your question with me is, Yes, I have worries, but when I kind of zone in and have that like Abraham type of faith, then mm. I'm able to know that whatever I put my hands to, it's going to mm. be successful. Does that know okay. what I mean? So I try and like leave my own human understanding. And even logically, you've got to mm. think of it. You have to be deluded. Mm. Um, I'm I'm jumping here, but I watched a, it's a while back. I watched... Chick, you know chicken shop day i don't mm, normally watch this yeah, type of stuff but yeah. i was and it was central c and obviously he's doing really well but he was getting asked a ton of questions and then he he stopped and he was just like i had to be deluded with this music thing i, I was doing it for so long mm. but no one was taking me in mm -hmm. so now i'm this famous guy and i'm doing stuff in america but i had to be deluded so you have to take yourself out of a very doubtful mm. mindset and you have to put yourself in a very purposeful mindset where you see it and then mm. when you see it so clearly you will take actions towards mm -hmm. it daily and once you start focusing on those inputs and yeah. not being emotionally attached to them the outputs will take care of itself and yeah. then people believe in your vision mm. and then a couple of years down the line you've got this me machine yeah that's amazing yeah that's so true i completely mm. i completely agree agree with you on that you do have to be delusional and yeah. 
again, like you said, you've got to have a vision that nobody else can see. Exactly. And sometimes it's far ahead in the future. So far. Sometimes, right? Yeah. Um, okay. Amazing. Um, so how do you manage all of this? <laughs> I'm sure you get asked this all the, the time. Million dollar right? question. Yeah. yeah how do, yeah, how do yeah, you how yeah. do you manage this? Because you know, I think a lot of people, right? They obviously got their nine to five, and they want to start a business, and then maybe maybe they have kids at home, maybe they mm. have a partner. They have all of these competing priorities, right? Sure. So for yourself, how how do you how do you manage it? So fortunately, I do have a partner. Um, I have a girlfriend, but I don't have any kids. In terms of managing it, how do I do it? Well, the first thing is I would say I create systems. I've been very good at creating systems. So if we go back to when I was, you know, at university mm. or let's actually go to investment banking when mm. I was like, you know, working in my early years yeah. because now I'm I have more liberty over my time mm. I used to make sure that my suit was ironed everything like as soon as I wake up mm. and shout everything was ready mm. and so that meant that that lead time in the morning of 30 45 mm. minutes was saved yeah and so it meant that I could go gym or the resistance to go to gym was less mm. than if I hadn't set up my stuff. Okay. When it came to nutrition and keeping yeah, on top of yeah, it, yeah. I would, sometimes I had to go to meal prep companies, mm. but because I started dialing in, mm. dialing in on my diet, I decided to pre-cook my chicken or okay. my meat, the stuff that took long on like mm. a Sunday and freeze it and then bring it out on the okay. days it was required. So again, yeah. having a system in place. So that idea of systemizing things mm. as quick as you can has followed me through. Okay. So from a business perspective, while I enjoy gym, I know that a healthy mind mm. and a healthy body helps me perform better. Mm -hmm. So I have my allocated days to go gym. Okay. How do I help myself go gym? Well, I have multi-access. I'm mm. passionate about gym, so I'm willing mm. to spend I have a very nice gym. I have a 24 hour gym and I've got a gym close to my house so I can always go gym. Fortunately, I drive, which makes it a lot easier. From a business sense, I started to schedule in dedicated time to business. Mm. So once the nine to five finishes, mm. I make sure that between six to nine or nine to 11 or sometimes, um, uh, 11 to 1 a.m mm. that is business time okay so i schedule it in and going back to the idea of parkinson's mm. law work expands to the time that you allocate that just mm. means that if it takes me one hour to do the outreach it's going to mm. take me one hour to do the outreach okay but if i now say that it's going to take me two hours it's going to take you two hours mm. So that's ways I do it. And then when you can and you can afford it, I outsource. Okay. So one of the things is you might have seen, I have YouTube mm. and stuff like that. I know how to edit. I learn how to edit. But when I got to an opportunity mm. uh, where I could outsource, mm -hmm. I outsource because the most valuable thing to me was creating the content. Okay. And you obviously create yeah. content. Yeah. The more podcasts you do, mm. the better, the better celebrities or should I say guests that you mm. get on the more you're going to reach. Yeah. Editing is very important and yeah. it's, it's good to do a high standard, mm. but that is not what people are coming to you. They're coming yeah. to the valuable conversations. Yeah. So when you realize what is the most valuable task, kind of outsourced it. And then once you realize that editing content will bring me X amount, let's say a hundred pound mm. and to edit it might be 20 pound. Mm. Well, it makes more sense to focus mm. on the bigger value task yeah. that's bringing in more money. 100%, so yeah. systemizing and outsourcing mm. uh, and being very strict with time. Okay. Wow. Amazing. Amazing, you, amazing tips. Amazing tips. Um, so are you involved in any other ventures, right? Obviously you got your business, you, you, you got your job. Um, are you involved in anything else? I'd say, well? so recently I've been in speaking. I okay. really enjoyed that. Yeah. Um, someone who, my friends that know me, I can talk. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I can talk. So it's just kind of being a person of value, but just sharing mm. my experience. So I love things like this. So thank you for, yeah. for having me on. Yeah. But I've been doing speaking. Oh, my pleasure. Um, a few speaking engagements there. Heavily involved in church. Okay. There's just from, a, you know, I go and just learning about the things of God and growing. And then, yeah, I have one of my friends' ventures who I'm really passionate about. He, his name is Demi, he's called Court Fit. So it's an e-learning platform that helps 
students from underrepresented backgrounds mm. or backgrounds, but they f- they'd focus on that to get okay. into high power careers. Okay, that's so interesting. I'm like a coach on there. So I coach, I okay. mentor, I help people through the application because application process, you know, I saw some stat that Goldman mm. Sachs had a 3% acceptance rate. Mm. And this acceptance rate is for people who attend the target six university mm-hmm. and have the A's and A stars. Okay. So it's already <clears throat> a niche of a niche. Yeah. But there's systems, there's ways in order to help you get there. So I support on that. And then from that, obviously bodybuilding and just all things personal development, really. No, that's amazing. Um, Thank you so much, Russell, for for coming on the pod. What what do you have planned next for yourself? So what do I have planned? Uh, I would say get to a place where my business is full-time. So, you know, I'm reading this book, Built to Sell, Mm. and... The idea of building to sell is to create a valuable business okay. that can run without you. Okay. And so a lot of people work, have a business, but yeah. they tend to work in their business. They're mm. basically employee, but have a lot of leeway. Yeah. So it's about building a business. One, I'm full-time. It's revenue mm. generating. We, we've made money, but we want to make more. And two, to a point where it's a machine where... Mm. I am not required on a mm. day to day and it's mm. it, and it's providing value. So yeah. for me, it's like, how many lives can I impact mm. and how can I systemize it that I don't have to be there on a day to day? And then in terms of other things, I'm just trying to travel and speak more and get okay. n- new experiences. I feel like this competition's a great experience. Once that's ticked off, I have a bit more time. I think just engaging with minds. Mm. Um, one of the things that I heard was, we were talking about earlier about mm. someone who had spent a lot of money to go mm. and, you know, be in the way, you know, be in the environment of rich people. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, and it, the way it shifts their mindset. Mm. And I feel like, you know, I'm someone who has learned off the people around me, but mm. to get to that higher level, you know, it's important to surround yourself with, with people from different perspectives and then be able to learn, digest it and bring it to your community Mm -hmm. so you can raise up. So for me, it's all about like upscaling and elevating and doing it in a very purposeful and uh, Christ-driven way. Amazing, amazing. And uh, where can people find you? Yeah, sure. So on Instagram, you find me at at underscore Mm -hmm. life of soul Mm or one word. So that's my personal Instagram, that's why I post all things, speaking, uh, bodybuilding, and just general what I'm doing. My business is at underscore total fit, but the fit is spelt with double I's. Mm. So I for employer, I for employee. Okay. So yeah, two I's in it. And I also got my YouTube channel, which is Life of Soul. You'll see it. It'll be connected in the mm. socials here. Yeah. But that's generally the best places, you know, I'm... I try, I'm good with my DMs. Like Mm. people, you know, message me, ask me questions and yeah. Amazing, amazing. And do you have any final words for the listeners and watchers? Yeah, sure. I would say there's one Bible verse which really sticks out to me, which is be ye not just listeners, but doers of the word. Mm. And sometimes when it comes to whatever you want to do, and I used to do it and I'm still struggling, but I'm getting better. People can consume, can consume, but they need to have a bias towards action. Mm, And mm. especially being an entrepreneur is sometimes this fashionable thing. Mm -hmm. But what you want to be is a problem solver. 100%. Uh, Because the more problems you can solve, people will pay you not for your time, but for who you are because you're solving a problem. So I would say for the listeners, we live in an era where you know, the degrees of freedom have gone from like six to maybe even two, i.e., you know, your ability to get to someone very prominent is a lot faster because of social media. You were talking to some, I don't want to say on a podcast, but some of the really successful people you've managed to communicate because of Instagram, Twitter, Mm -hmm. LinkedIn. So in short, make sure that you're constantly filling your mind, renewing your mind with positive information. But have a bias towards action. Do stuff, whether it's ten, sending 10 outreach, outreach messages a day. Like some of the good messages I get were from mm. you, but it's just like, mm. hey, really love what you're doing. Can I have time with you? Some people might be busy. Some people might ignore. But if you send 10 every day for six months, you're going to get connected to someone. 100%. So have a bias towards action. Fail fast. And um, yeah, stick with positive people. 
Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. I feel like so motivated to energize from this conversation. Thank you. Um, really because of your mindset. I think I think you, you have a, a strong mindset and that, mm. that shows through all the different various things that you're yeah. that you're doing. Mm. And so I feel like a lot of the listeners are gonna feel motivated to, sure. to do what you gotta do. And you know, the other thing I liked is the fact that you're also real, right? Like mm. you 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 say, look, I ha- I have these challenges, but this yeah. is how I approach it. I manage sure. it. I expect that I have these mm. challenges, but I'm gonna make sure that I get through it because Definitely. that's that's just life honesty right? is key you know um we're gonna have some days that are not our best yeah it's how we bounce back from those days that Precisely. are not our best. It's, the, it's the most important so yeah no it's been it's been a great conversation i really really enjoyed this no i appreciate this you're, you're welcome um watchers listeners i hope that you've enjoyed this episode of takeover experience and yeah we'll see you next week's episode appreciate you listening and watching